Skeuomorphism. Basically the design practice of incorporating real-world elements into a digital interface slash UI. This is one of the reasons why iOS 6, which is what we'll be looking at today, has remained so large. Even community-wise, there's a huge community backing iOS 6 still by trying to make new apps for it and the like. And I do believe that it's largely just the overall design of um, just early iOS up until 6. Because if we look at 7, I don't hate 7. I think 7 looks pretty cool, but there is certainly a huge shift towards what we're more used to today, and that's that flat overall design of UI. So, without further ado, let's just take a dive into iOS 6 and see what I can still do on this iPod Touch 4th generation in 2025, because I think you'll be presently surprised. Pleasantly, I can't talk properly. Now as for general app support, this is mainly going to be spearheaded by the community itself because officially almost everything is completely dead, but you will be pleasantly surprised to see stuff like a fully functional Discord client, like almost fully. It doesn't have voice, but it does have DMs. It does obviously have the ability to scroll through the channels and everything and just generally chat with friends. I think it's a really nice looking client because it also carries over that 3D-ish looking design, kind of skeuomorphism, and overall, pretty cool. Next up, a Blue Sky Twitter bridge. It actually uses the actual official old Twitter app. This part isn't like remade or anything, this is just the actual Twitter client app, but it's using a bridge from Blue Sky, which isn't Twitter, but you know, it is what it is, and it works. It connects to Blue Sky and everything, and it's pretty neat. Links in the description to all this, by the way. And similar to the Blue Sky Bridge for the Twitter app, there is a similar thing for Tumblr. Not an app I normally use, but I downloaded it just to test this, and it does still connect. You can search things, and I assume you could sign in if you wanted to. But it's not an app I normally use, but I thought I would show it off. Links in the description as well. Pretty cool stuff that it's working on iOS 6. And lastly, one of the most impressive apps is going to be the YouTube Bridge. Once again, similar to uh, Tumblr and Twitter or Blue Sky for that matter, the YouTube one uses the actual old official iOS YouTube client just being bridged over to a different server. So if you use the old app back in the day, a little bit of nostalgia here because it's the same thing. All the features are there, the old YouTube layout, and you can search for any modern video just as you'd expect on YouTube. I don't think you can sign in but that doesn't really matter because videos still work and play super well might not be the best quality on a screen like this, but it does feel fun to relive a bit of an older experience. Not bad at all. Next up we have gaming, and these things were actually really big gaming devices back in the day. Steve Jobs himself came up on stage and said that the iPod Touch was one of the largest gaming little handheld devices ever, and yeah, there's a huge collection of old apps you can find. You got Minecraft right here, which surprisingly, for it being a somewhat more recent-ish version, like 2016, 2015 or so, it runs pretty well on this older iPod from 2011. Uh, we have stuff like Smash Hit, which does strain the system a bit, but Smash Hit is a really fun game I used to love playing back in the day. Of course you got your Angry Birds, because of course you have to have that. It was huge back then. And we have Crossy Roads, another game that kind of taxes this poor iPod, but all these nostalgic games. And why not Call of Duty? Surprisingly, the Call of Duty game looked like the most demanding game, but it was actually super smooth, so I guess that goes to show how good optimization was back then. But overall, if you want a little handheld nostalgic device, huge amount of old app collections. You can sideload the games, the IPA files onto the device fairly easily. 10 out of 10 for nostalgia. Just nothing recent and modern. Now, one of the main hurdles of iOS 6 in 2025 is the web browser. Not a huge problem because we've all moved on to better phones with more recent software, but yeah, that means you're going to have a pretty bad time browsing the web. Compared to the actual good support of earlier apps I just mentioned, your best bet for a browser is probably something like Opera Mini because that's server-sided by Opera. That means you won't run into errors running sites. But while you won't run into errors loading the sites, the rendering 
will be completely messed up because it is just an older browser so it doesn't really know how to render modern sites properly so as you can see here like the Toronto website pretty good other websites like Apple though completely just broken so it's gonna be a really hit or miss game some apps will be better some will be quite bad and maybe someday the community will make a modern browser but I don't really know if someone's gonna really decide to put the effort into that so browser support and probably just let it go so lastly as a more quality of life thing if you want to be able to bring back the default weather and stocks app you can do that it takes a city of modification which I'll have in the description but it basically does as what it sounds like it brings back functionality of the weather app and the stocks app which originally broke around 2018 to 2020 or so so you need the modification to get it working but once you do any location see the temperature it's a weather app you know how they work it's pretty cool to see it in all its glory working again as for the stocks app you can see ongoing stock news which is pretty cool i'm not super into stocks or anything but it's cool that you can see ongoing news still in this old interface so pretty cool links in the description overall conclusion of ios 6 in 2025 is 50 50. it's 50 percent not really usable at all but the other 50 percent still quite usable as you saw with some various apps like the blue sky bridge youtube and whatnot but it's all stuff you can do on a modern device obviously so who is it for well let me just nostalgia and if you are kind of crazy you could daily drive like an iphone 5 pretty sure those have lte but outside of a little bit of craziness it is mainly just a nostalgic device i could also see these being used as obviously what they were meant for back in the day at least the ipods that's a music player but overall ios 6 is still chugging along thanks to the community supporting it uh, beg xml mainly that's a big one they're really helping ios 6 out and i will have all the helps and fixes in the description so if you want to comment about a question check the description first because that's where i'll have some of the helpful bits overall though that's been ios 6 hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. That was a door behind me.